So when we left off, guys, we were talking about weak entities. And I said the next step was going to be to define an associative entity. Well, that's a special type of relationship. We'll leave it at that part for now with that. Okay, now what I want to do, I just want to clear us up a space really quick. Okay, and now Okay. So we're gonna be good to go here. Put this back down to size, zoom in, scroll that up, scroll this down like that. Okay. Alright guys, so we went over associative entity, now this is ID dependent entity. This is a whole new concept. An ID dependent entity, it's an entity or child whose identifier includes the identifier of another entity and that would be the parent right so basically what we're saying here is that it shares it includes the primary key of another entity so we call this ID dependent it depends Right on that other entity's identifier. We shouldn't say primary key because in, in conceptual design it's, uh, it's actually called an identifier. So it hasn't become yet a primary key, but it's an identifier. Okay. Now, a logical extension or subunit of the parent is a weak entity, right? So an ID dependent is a weak entity because it is a logical extension or subunit of the parent right because it shares that primary key okay now if we scroll down here okay a solid line in our diagram indicates and identifying relationship and what does this mean this is when two tables share the same identifier and remember one of these is going to be the ID dependent entity and the other one is going to be the parent entity so that's when we have a table like this and a table like this. We have cat, dog, and we have ID number. And let's say uh, ID number. Now this is a really bad example because cats and dogs are a bit distinct, but it, let's say they both have the same exact primary key. For whatever reason, uh, the identifier here, right? So this, is, this shows the identifier right here and right here. And let's say they were both using the same ID numbers. Well, we would link them up with a solid line. And then in this in this case, right, let's say we use a crow's foot notation. Let's say one cat could have many dog minions, let's say. And, and you know, so this would be a maximum cardinality. And then, but the, the cat didn't necessarily have to have dog minions. But the, the dog had to belong, you know, each dog had to have at least one, uh, just one cat. So it uh, must have one cat associated with it. So that's, that's sort of a tying everything we did together. But anyway, we're running out of time, so I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.